Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, got another video. I'm gonna try to get back to a regular scheduled video thing like I used to. Because like, uh, just get busy and life happens and uh, sometimes you have to do and deal with other things. So, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys are having a great week. And uh, hope you're having good luck with your gardening and all your projects. And today we're just going to do a small update on some of the things that are growing on around here in my backyard. So we've got my aquaponics system, obviously. Um, we've got a solar-powered aquaponics system over here. We'll check that out. We'll look at the fish, and uh, let's get to it. All right, we'll start over here. Here's where I was building my foundry. Another thing I'm working on. Got the veg oil guy planted a seed in my head, and now I'm wanting to build more things so here we've got the solar powered system so originally I had uh, over the winter I had hooked this up to the house because the pump for the solar powered system had stopped working and it was attached back there in that far corner and it was uh yeah, the water was pretty cold so I didn't want to jump in there to go over there and get it and once it warmed up I reached in there and cut the pump off and pulled it out over here and turns out it just had one piece of perlite in it. Like something like this. That was blocking one of the impellers. So there was nothing wrong with it, it didn't wear out. I, in fact, I bought another one. And uh, I just put it in here. It has like a little, it just moves water around. And then here's the other one here. And it's getting ready to do a, a siphon action right now. Uh, we've got the solar panels up here. I've got one here and another one up here. And right now we've got the radishes. I let them go to seed so I can collect some of the seeds from them. Um, these particular radishes were really good, so I, I definitely want to get some seeds and collect those. So we've got some flowers and we've got some insects up there helping with the pollination. Um, yeah, we'll go check out the... Uh, tilapia they're gonna get all excited they're very curious so I've got two fish tanks I've got two nurseries um, underneath the shade cloth here I have my filtration system that requires zero maintenance and you do not have to dump out any waste um, unless you want to, which I usually use some of the waste in, uh, I'll toss that in over here sometimes to uh, help with it. But since I have a lot of fish in there now, I probably won't do that anymore. And then I just use this to dump in my compost bins here. And then we got two more down there. So here we have... This is an aerated, uh, I can't think of the name of this, <laughs> mineralization tank, there we go. So that's my mineralization tank. So the fish waste comes out of these guys through the uh, solid lifting overflow. And then over here, we've got a bio filter underneath my garden hose. Let me just throw that on the ground for now. And we'll check a look, take a look inside here and see all the bio media. So this thing's been running for, gosh, three years now. So these are three years old. And it does a really, really good job. I don't think I've had any issues. I did some tinkering with it in the beginning, but it works fine. And then on the inside, you probably can't see it. We'll, we'll look in there anyways. That is where the water drains out. And that water drains out here. Comes out, goes underground. And it goes over here into this 375 gallon IBC container that I have buried in the ground. It is wrapped up. Um, I wrapped it up with plastic, uh, tarps, uh, and then I put wood around it. So here's the sunk tank. 
don't know if you can see them there or not. Pluggers are down here. So there's the inside of the sump tank. Sorry about the noise. And the sump tank provides water for, well, quite a bit of the garden. We got some uh, unhappy looking carrots here. We got some really big carrot plants. I haven't actually gone out here and looked to see if there's any carrots. Let's just pull one out and see what happens. Hey, look at that. There's a carrot. And it's straight ish. So we got carrots. I will eat that later. That's awesome. It's not super big, but you know, about the size of my finger, a little bit longer. And then this one, this one's really tall. Let's we'll see what happens. Let me pull that out. And there's a carrot. It's probably uh, not very tasty because it's uh, bolted. So we'll just throw that in the compost bin. No biggie. Set that there for now. And then I've got the last of my winter crop. I need to collect these and then I gotta yank these guys out and start getting rid of some of these older plants. And then these things, you know I don't remember what they were when I bought them. They look like potatoes. But potatoes don't look like that. So I'm not sure what these are. Beets or something? Maybe they're beets, sugar beets. Some of them are pretty big. So I don't know, maybe I'll cut that off off camera and see if it tastes like anything. Or maybe I'll just break it open right now. It is red on the inside, so maybe it is a beet. Um, we got some cantaloupe and watermelon going over here. Oh, look, we got some uh, uh, some squash. Very cool. Oh, excited about that. I got some squash. And over here we've got more... Uh, more melons and then the last of my winter vegetables. So, melons are doing all right. And another melon over here, it looks like. And my strawberry, my one strawberry. It looks like it's finally starting to grow. So, see what happens with that. I just gotta, I gotta leave it alone. I have a bad habit of messing with those and I gotta stop it. And then we got here, we got aphid central. Yeah, there's aphids all over this thing. So we'll get this out of here. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll throw that in the fish tank. The fish will love that. And we've got some spinach. And then, uh, got the compost bins. So, uh, the way these beds work too, if anybody was wondering, is they're flood and drain, and I have a bell in here, and I can take this all apart. It's all removable. See the water draining out down there, and it's fairly clean. That's good. And then my fill line is over here. I just keep it covered up so we don't get a bunch of algae growing because uh, the algae will consume the nutrients as well as the plants and we just want the nutrients to be used up by the plants so that they can have nutrition and grow and get stronger and produce fruit for me. And over here, oh, we got a ripe tomato. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I didn't even know that was going to happen already. Haha. <laughs> I was just talking to my friend Beaker about these and that they were all still green. So we will definitely eat that guy. Oops. But these are my sweet cherry 100s. So they're covered in tomatoes clusters. We got a bell pepper. We got another tomato plant here. More tomatoes. So we've got yellow scotch bonnets here, I believe. And I got another one in here. Uh, sweet banana pepper, habanero, and a lemon boy. It's got tomatoes on it as well. This plant might be the only one that doesn't have any fruit just yet. 
has flowers set up here. Excuse me. So there we go. A little update. Um, I've got some projects in mind. I just um, need to take some time off from work and get some of my thoughts collected on things. Um, but, you know, try to be positive and um, try to keep you guys informed of some of the videos. I, I know I've been slacking a lot. Actually, I was at an, another channel and I commented on one of somebody else's videos. Uh, I think it's the Backyard Garden Guy. And he responded and he was like, I think he yelled at me and told me to, I need to keep up my YouTube channel. Sorry about that, you guys. I didn't realize that uh, uh, you guys found this stuff interesting at all. It's just something I like to do. Here's the fishies. I said they'll try to bite me. They bite. It doesn't hurt though. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they're very happy and healthy. Um, let's check the water temperature. 85. That's where it should stabilize then. Uh, last year it never got, I don't think it got any warmer than that. The fish though, they can tolerate water temperatures up to 115. So, uh, we got some room. But the aeration that I use in the system, I have the air pumps located in the house. So, the fish are getting air conditioned uh, water or air conditioned air pumped into their tanks so it helps keep the water temperature down well these are they're beautiful fish they're gonna be really tasty because these guys only eat fresh vegetables they don't eat fish food they look very healthy see these guys in here they're very curious they're like, what is that thing? Oh, that's the thing that feeds us. <laughs> Alright, I think we'll wrap this up, you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, pop those in at the bottom. And, uh, oh. There's my first uh, chunk of melted aluminum. It's got a lot of crap in the top of it. I think they call that dross. Or dross. Dross. And then the, the bottom is pretty much solid aluminum about a 12 pack of beer and then maybe 5,000 little tabs and then uh, I do have a crucible so we'll do a video on that too once I build another foundry because the last one I built only lasted through one use and then it broke and then I built these little tongs out of some steel from the hardware store like well, it cost me ten dollars to make that, and then uh, I think my plan is to turn this steel container into the next uh, foundry. But we'll see. I have a lot of ideas. I have to think about that first. And uh, yeah, just need some more time. So, all right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and uh, as always, keep building. And try to be good to each other. We're not here for very long. And if you have a friend that rides motorcycles, give them a hug. And watch out for motorcycles. <laughs>